guys. What are we gonna do, man? It's raining. Can't ride the bike. They're coming down. I don't know if you can see it on camera. It's raining out. The post office is gonna go broke. I don't know what to do. Hey, welcome back to Nat Timmy 66. How the heck is everybody doing on this rainy Tuesday, man? Hope everybody is doing well today. So today's topic, let's talk about the United States Postal Service delivering for America's 10-year plan. I want to get a little bit more into detail because I was doing some reading on it after my video yesterday, and there's some exciting stuff in there, guys. Let's talk about the future of the post office. How the heck is everybody doing today? I hope everybody's doing well. And uh, check out this day, man. Um, yeah, guys, not the greatest day, but that's okay. I have some updates for you guys on the MHA. I just spoke with my, uh, I guess, human resource contact guy get to that in just a second so i sent an email to my uh, human resources contact there at the post office just kind of asking you know what's the update on the orientation date um how is that determined and he said that basically all they're doing right now is just processing people's identifications id badges and once those go through then they send the notification out so i should be hearing something really soon yay on that so i can get started in the old MHA, but that's not what I came here to talk to you guys about today. I just thought I'd give you that little bit of an update and definitely we'll keep you all posted on that as well. But I want to talk about this 10 year plan that the post office has come up with saving America or delivering for America or whatever. But there's been a lot going on and a lot to be said about the post office losing a ton of money over the last few years last 10 years or so or longer since the internet has uh, kind of taken its business away man like I said yesterday on my video people are uh, not getting their bills mailed to their home anymore and they t and you know that's just one example but the the post office has taken a big hit man a big hit and what they're trying to avoid is a projected 160 billion with a B dollar loss over the next 10 years. So DeBoss, I think his name is, is the, uh, and correct me please if I'm wrong, is the new postmaster uh, general for the US Post Office. And he's come up with this 10 year plan. And I just kind of wanted to highlight some things as I was reading about it for you guys, kind of let you know what's going on. First of all, like I said, what my suspicions are, I believe are correct. The post office ain't going anywhere. Its business is going to lean more towards the uh, parcel side of things, package delivery and stuff like that, because they're going to focus where the money is, right? Uh, just like anybody else. Now, the post office is behind the times on a lot of things like technology, um, infrastructure. Um, there's some things I think that need to be corrected with their employment. And I think it sounds to me like what I'm going to go over here, and I did take notes again, guys. Because I noticed in my videos that I repeat a lot, and that probably bores the crap out of you guys. So I thought it might stop boring you with that and just kind of be a little bit more concise. There's like some highlights of the plan I kind of wanted to go over. It's a 10 year plan. Uh, and the idea and the goal is to maintain a 95% network wide on time delivery. Okay. That doesn't just mean with their packages and stuff like that, that means everything at 95% or better. They're, and like I said, they're trying to avoid $160 billion in losses over the next 10 years. So let's get into the highlights, man. Highlight number one, uh, they want to preserve the affordable six day mail delivery. So that's what, uh, Monday through Saturday mail delivery. And they also want to expand their seven day delivery of uh, package delivery. So, that means probably a lot more Amazon packages will be flowing through the post office. That also means that they're going to be increasing the number of their packages. And they've got some 
pretty smart ideas going on out there to help that along with um, self-help tools, e-commerce stuff. You know how uh, FedEx, I, they're behind the times, but like FedEx and stuff like that, you can pretty much do it all yourself. The post office wants to do that as well, and they want to implement that plan. Um, so they're going to enhance their package delivery services, try to keep them just as affordable as they were as before with the first class and the priority and stuff like that. Because really, to be honest with you, the cheapest way to send a package, depending on the time frame you're looking at, is and always has been through the post office, right? It is the cheaper way to go. Now, there are more expensive ways to do things if you do like... Um, same day or next day delivery and stuff like that it gets a little more expensive there but if you just send in a package guys and you want it done reliably and you want you don't really care i mean if it takes 10 days to get there to your uncle in boise idaho or wherever um, that can be done and it can be done reliably and really really inexpensively as opposed to usps i'm, I'm sorry ups uh, fedex stuff like that so yeah, there's that. That's one highlight. And another highlight of this 10-year plan that they're talking about, and I think is really exciting, just from the aspect that I've been in some of these vehicles in their fleet, and I've been in some of these operations areas, and they really, really need to revamp it. They want to spend, looking at my notes here, sorry guys, $40 billion in their workforce. Okay, of that $40 billion, they want to, they've got a, a plan to totally revamp their fleet of vehicles uh, there's a couple reasons behind that number one is that, i mean these vehicles are from like 1980 to 1985 right they're basically s10 pickup trucks with a box stuck on the back right they don't have a whole lot of room for a lot of packages and stuff like that so they want to revamp that and they want to change the vehicle modernize the fleet with a it's like a multi-billion dollar contract that somebody is going to get to build new vehicles for the post office and they're trying to get them all to be electric which you know i don't know amazon's doing that um you know maybe it's something that'll work i don't know but that's the plan stan so they want to increase their infrastructure they want to increase their, uh, or they want to change their infrastructure. Um, included also in that $40 billion is, of course, upgrading equipment that they use, making more stuff automated. Yes, they are going to make more things automated, automated sorters and things along those lines. That's part of the plan. And, uh, but the one thing I was really excited about just because I've been in the vehicles is to modernize their fleet. And if they go electric, they go electric. As long as it works, great. I hope it's not a really expensive debacle for them. I hope it does work out. But that's the plan. That's part of the 10-year plan to save the post office. I shouldn't be calling this to deliver for America. I should be calling it to save our asses, right? The 10-year plan to save our ass. Um, they also want to adjust their delivery standards a little bit so that they can guarantee that they're going to get the mail in a specific time frame. So the amount of time it's gonna take for a letter to get to you across town or across the country may change a little bit, but that way they can shore up their delivery times and make sure that they're more reliable with the workforce that they have. Here comes the important point for us coming up, or at least for me anyway, coming up. So I thought I would read this off of the, um, off of my little notes. It's reading time. It's story time, guys. How do you like that? But they want to stabilize their workforce by, and get this part, by cutting non-career employee turnover by half, by allowing for more predictable progression from non-career employee to career employee. And that, guys, is very important. And the reason that's very important, the whole time that I was in uh, orientation the first time around and in talking with the folks, uh, you know, that are postal employees and talking to the people that I consider more to be in the know of things, 
I kept hearing that they're going to reduce the amount of time it takes a person like us coming in as MHAs, CCAs, RCAs, PSE, all that stuff. Um, the time it takes you to switch from being a non-career employee to a career employee. And this kind of goes along the lines of what a friend of mine had said or and also a couple of people have commented on my channel saying, look, man, if they just hired people in as career employees, they wouldn't have as much turnover rate and they wouldn't have, uh, you know, as many upset or, you know, employees that are just getting impatient and bail for a better job or whatever. And that is correct because the average wait time used to be, and correct me guys if I'm wrong, but it used to be about two years. There was a two year guarantee for uh, CCAs to become regular employees, not complete regular employees though. It was like you got all of the benefits or most of the benefits of becoming a regular um, without that actual status. Um, and that was two years and you know what guys that can be kind of a long time and the new postmaster one of his goals that he has stated and I was told this from HR at the post office one of the goals he stated is to cut that time way 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 down so it's a smart move on behalf of the post office because if you go into a situation where you're an assistant, yeah, you're getting some benefits, yeah, you're getting good pay, but you're missing out on bidding for jobs and the other things that go on that the regulars get to do, um, that the assistants and the people that are temporary employees don't really get. And yeah, if you have to wait two years to get to that status, sometimes that can wear on a guy or a gal, right? Well, they're going to cut that down way, way down. So the time it's going to take for me as a, going in as an MHA to become a MH, not a, I can think of all kinds of bad words for MH, but a mail handler from mail handler assistant to mail handler, a regular employee is going to be greatly reduced. And that's important. That's investing in their new hire employees. And I think they recognize that some of their turnover rate is coming from the fact that it takes so dang long or it used to take so dang long just to become a regular employee of the post office. Instead of working your 360 days and having to take a five day break in service, then basically getting rehired and going through it again year after year after year. They are looking at going ahead and just making people regular a lot sooner, which means that you don't have to go through all that and you have the full benefits of the post office and the union, which are really important, man. I mean, we're working hard. We're, we're, we're delivering for America. You guys remember that commercial that what was it that Kellogg's or whatever it was that cereal company? We got to feed America. Well, we're delivering for America, right? But we work hard at what we do and we take pride in our work. I think we ought to reap some benefit and some reward of that, definitely. And guys, you know, I could be wrong. I'm not 100% of an expert. I'm just reading you guys what I've researched and letting you guys know what I think personally would be a really good plan. And I think there's a lot of things to this plan that I really like. And the one thing I really like that stands out more than anything else is the conversion time that it takes to become a regular employee. I think that it would be great for folks to be able to know that they only have to go six months or a year as opposed to two years or who knows how long before you might get the opportunity. Because when you become a regular employee, you can bid different shifts, right? You can, there's, you get the full union backing, you get all of the benefits. And when you're just an assistant or part-time or temporary for a year, employee that gets rehired every year you're kind of held at a different standard and you don't get you, yeah you still can bid within your group of let's say let's just take mhas right mail handler assistants right so if i get hired in with a group of 15 mail handlers and there's a job bid come open all the regulars and the people that are full-time employees career employees are going to get their choices first then it's going to come down to the MHAs, right? And the MHAs is going to go by seniority there. Why not just bump everybody up into that pool? 
and give everybody equal shot at it. It's going to reduce the, the turnover rate. It's going to make for a much happier employee base, in my humble opinion. And if you guys didn't know this, that the post office is under the office, uh, the executive branch of the United States government, right? So it's under the president. So the winds of can always change along with the political winds. This is a 10 year plan. And I mean, I know that when Trump was in, he said the post office was a mess. Uh, and now we've got uh, Joe Biden in and uh, he's got his own postmaster that he you know, that, that is running the show right now. And by 2024, things are probably, especially the way things are going politically right now, things are probably gonna change again. So things can change, but at least the post office in and of itself recognizes that it's got some issues and it wants to avoid losing all this money and start be, being more competitive and gaining competitive edge over everybody else. The post office has got a huge on-time infrastructure that's been in place. And matter of fact, for last mile delivery, the post office is, no one can beat last mile delivery that the post office has. Their infrastructure, the way they have it built up, the way they have post offices set up everywhere and stuff like that is not matched by any other company, not FedEx, not DHL, not UPS, nobody. It's not matched at all. And so they're seeing it as an opportunity for growth and they're seeing it as an opportunity to really make some money. And if the post office starts making money, we start making more money, right? And that's the important thing to me, guys. Feeding the family, putting the kids through college. All right, I'll admit it. Buying a Can-Am Spider RT, see the sky, love them, want one. But it gives you opportunities to do what you want to do, right? And that's a, that's the bottom line. So, if you ask me if the post office is going anywhere anytime soon, again, my answer to that is no. Uh, the future of the post office hopefully is bright. Uh, I stay positive and optimistic on most things. And after reading this report, it sounds like they have a pretty good grasp on what they need to do to get themselves back to a competitive edge and to compete in today's market like and then like the e-commerce thing that they're going to do where you can do more if you own a business you can set up your own deliveries you can tell the postman hey i want this delivered here i want this to be delivered there you know what i mean more things that are already being done by other companies i.e amazon and say what you will about amazon they pretty much have led the way in that uh, cutting edge technology and convenience for customers. And um, I think it's time the post office stepped up its game to do the same. And it sounds to me like they're going to. So that's it, man. That's the 10 year plan that they've got going on right now that as I read it, now please correct me on anything that you guys see as being wrong here. And also if you have any questions about it, let me know. I'm going to do my best to answer everything I can. And again, I want to thank everybody so much for watching my channel on this rainy, here in Texas anyway, rainy Tuesday. If you are working today, don't work too hard. Work smart, not hard, as I always say. Um, we're at like 200 and uh, I think 15 subscribers now, so the channel is still growing. Please thumbs up the video if you like it. Thumbs down if you hate it, right? Just interact with the video. Feed that algorithm, right? The more you guys comment, the more you guys thumbs up or thumbs down at whatever, just voice your opinion, interact with the video, the more people get to see it because the algorithm rhythm sees that people are watching it and it sends it out there to other folks. Therefore, we can grow the channel, which is the goal. So you guys all take care. Have a wonderful day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Not Timmy 66. No matter what you do in life, make it count. Not Timmy 66 is out for today, guys. Have a good one.